Hey folks, welcome to this week's edition of Brush Pile Fishing. Today we're at beautiful Dale Hollow. We're going to fish with my good friend Denny Wilbert. And Denny says we're going to concentrate on some deep structure fish. He said normally by this time of year the fish have moved up into the shallows, but it's been so warm that the lake is just now transitioning. So we're going to concentrate on them deep water fish. Should be a great time. It's beautiful down here as always. So you stay tuned. We'll be right back with Brush Pile Fishing. Many people look at a lake and feel a sense of calm serenity. Crappie fishermen feel the heart-pounding anticipation of the thump. That's why host Russ Bailey is addicted to crappie fishing. It's this addiction that takes Russ from the Midwest to the Deep South in search of the best lakes, techniques, and patterns from some of the best crappie anglers in the country, right here on Brush Pile Fishing. Hey folks, welcome back to Brush Pile Fishing here at Dale Hollow Marina with Denny Wilbur. Denny, how we doing? Good to see you again, Russ. I'll tell you what, a little bit chillier this time than it was last time. Yeah, we had some weather go through yesterday and it's, it's gonna be a cool day. But. You know, we, uh, we're gonna concentrate today on late fall, early uh, December fish, actually. And you said that the lake is running behind where it normally is, the turnover's just happening because we've had a lot of warm weather this fall. Yeah, they, they, they pulled the bottom of the lake out and made it turn over this year and it's uh, it's been nesting, but it's about to clear up and we've been seeing some fish at some 25 and 30 foot deep. So we're going for some deep crappie today. Yeah, deep piles. And you said uh, they, they're not really bundled up yet. We're going to catch one or two in a pile and have to move? Right. All right, I'm gonna have to move around and catch a lot of fish. Have to work hard. Oh, well, hey, you know what? I'm all for it. Today's my birthday, so I've got to work anyway. Happy so, birthday. Uh, we're actually, uh, we're gonna use the bonehead plastics. They work real good in the spring, so we're gonna see what they can do in this early winter fishing now. Awesome, awesome. look forward to it. All right, Dale Hollow fishing. Here we go, folks. There you go, there you go. Ooh, oh, where's nice the fish? That's a, a dandy. Yes, sir. Oh, hold still. Come here. Holy cow. Hey, folks. If you just joined us, we're at Dale Hollow. We don't have quite enough lighting yet to go out. Uh, so Denny said, let's catch a few on the dock while we're waiting. Look at that. That's a black nose crappie. I want to get a close up of that. That is a dandy fish. Hey, there's one from you, Daddy. Yeah. Dude, he pounded that. Yeah, that's a good there sign. There we go. When they're stumping them early, there's another little one. Denny, now you keep getting that size and let me keep getting them other ones. This is our northern specimens. <laughs> that's an Ohio crappie. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys and girls, if you just joined us, we're here at Dale Hollow Marina with Denny Wilbert, the owner, and uh, we're waiting to go out. We don't have quite enough light for the camera, so we're just fishing right here and caught a couple crappie already. How many boat slips you have here at Dale Hollow Marina? Well, between Dale Hollow and Cedar Hill, we've got 400 slips. Oh, geez. And you own the other marina also there? Yes, sir. We purchased it last year and been adding a bunch of new slips and rebuilt the whole thing so far, all new structure. No kidding. Working on it hard. Well, actually, last night, Denny, you put us up in a houseboat, cabin, whatever you want to call it. It was like walking into a cabin. Yeah, a floating cabin. That was pretty cool. Now, Dale Hollow is a pretty big lake. What what area are we on right now? We're at the very north end of the lake, close to the dam. We're in uh, Clay County, Tennessee, the city of Salina. And uh, right, we call it the pretty end of the lake. It's the deeper end, Yeah. clear water, a lot of straight up and down cliffs and uh, just a beautiful part of the lake. I think like we talked on our last time, but this lake's broke down in three different places and this is this is the top side and the middle side's got a lot of humps and grass beds and then you get back to where it splits in the rivers and it's just, it's all a beautiful and well, well producing lake. It's uh, got a lot of fish in it. Yeah. We hope to find some of them today. You know, this spring, I remember when we did the show, of course, it was spring spawning and boats everywhere. 
Now, is the fishing quite as good with deer season and everything, or are the fishermen out as much? The fishermen aren't out as much. It's it's a ghost town out there. Uh, you see a lot of bass fishermen, smallmouth fishermen start coming in now because the colder it gets, the better the smallmouth gets, and they'll be here all winter long, all through February, all the way through the spawn. So, are you still open for business this time then? We're open year round, yes sir. Okay. We, we put them up on our floating cabins and our floating houseboats and we keep them open for the fishermen all winter long. And folks, I can tell you, those accommodations are super, trust me. And if it's too windy and you're staying here, this is pretty darn good right now. Yeah, this is our rainy day spot. <laughs> I've spent many a winter day out here just playing and catching. Wow. Dale Hollow in Tennessee is stunning, even to the locals who see it every day. It's home to the world record smallmouth bass, plus the top three biggest smallmouth bass in the world. Dale Hollow Lake has some of the biggest crappie in the nation, as well as many other species, including bass, carp, catfish, muskie, walleye, and abundant schools of panfish. In addition, Dale Hollow has over 620 miles of shoreline with over 30,000 acres of pristine fishable waters that also provides room for all forms of water sports like skiing, snorkeling, and wake surfing. To access this amazing lake, you will have your choice of marinas to launch from like Cedar Hill and Dale Hollow Marina to name a few. If you are looking for a memorable getaway, make Clay County, Tennessee and Dale Hollow the top of your list. Visit DaleHollowMarina.com. Brush Pile Fishing is brought to you by these outstanding sponsors. b and Poles, the number one crappie pole company in the world. War Eagle, built for hunters who love to fish. Suzuki, the ultimate four-stroke outboard. Slime Line, catch the fever. Bonehead Tackle, most durable crappie plastics in the industry. Mossback Fish Habitat, Cornfield Crappie Gear, quality products built in the USA. We've hit one dock, this is the second one. And uh, you told me the, the, the key to this, you've got trees on a lot of these. Yeah, we've, we put trees in here every year. We keep adding more trees, and this uh, is a great winter spot. I catch fish here all winter long, all the way into the spring spawn. We're sitting in 60 foot of water. Right now? Right now, there and uh, the trees. I don't think he's as big as that last one. But you know what? He's a crappie. Oh, there's no. He better not be bigger than this one. I'll drop him. <laughs> So we're over 60 foot right now. We're standing over 60 foot of water, and these trees start at 15 feet deep, and they'll go to 20 to 30 foot. No kidding. Yeah. We, uh, you know, folks, we talked about it's been warm uh, later than, than usual this year. You look at these fish, they haven't even lost any color like they normally will when that water gets real cold. And even to the touch, these are not cold fish yet. So back in Ohio, we've got about, I fished last week, we had 44 degree water temperature. These aren't even close to that. It's been warm here. Yeah. Our water temperature right now is 60 degrees. Still 60 degrees, 60 first degrees. week of December. Yep. Goodness. Yeah, I use them for hand warmers right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Denny, last night we were talking and about the properties. Oh, there he was, about the properties you have. Um, you said you had to put quite a lot of work into some of them when you bought them. Yeah, we did. We uh, basically we knew we had to start over projects uh, they you know these marinas are built back in the 40s there's a there's a true northern specimen. that is an Ohio fish huh yeah, just we, rub uh, it in <laughs> we uh, we've had to go we had uh, 36 cabins and we sold off part of them and we started going through every one of them and we totally rebuilt the dock structure all the mainframe and put a lot of money in a lot of work and uh, we're continuing to build We've added 60 slips last year. We've got 60 slips coming this year. Uh, all of we got 13 houseboats that uh, we totally gone through. New furniture, new carpet, new flooring, new bedding, yeah. painting them, new roofs, and just a lot of lot of work. It's been uh, let go for a lot of years, but we've we've got them up to snuff. And we had a tremendous year last year because of this COVID. Uh, this was a place we call it isolation. Yeah. Yeah. Quarantine yeah. at the lake, and people just flocked in here. We didn't have anything sit still at all. It was a great year for us. It was a 
good first year of Cedar Hill and it really helped to uh, help get it in shape. So we know when fitting. COVID hit, one of the first activities they let people do again was go out fishing. Correct. And yeah. the fishing industry in general has been outstanding this year. It is, and we've got so many uh, reservations already for next year. I think a lot of people rediscovered the outdoors. Yep, yep. And uh, we're excited about that, especially being in the outdoor business. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, there's, uh-oh, sorry. What you got? What you got? got some show oh, oh, yes, look at that. Oh. Oh, Folks, we haven't even started what we're supposed to be fishing this morning. This is a Cracker Jack. Look at that. Stay right there. More Brush Pile Fishing action is next. Brush Pile Fishing is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Crappie USA, Gill Fishing, I Hold Jigs, Blue Storm Life Jackets, Offshore Tackle, Power Pole, The American Crappie Trail, Driftmaster Rod Holders, Smooth Move Seats, Brush Pile Fishing Online Store, Grand Lake St. Mary's. You know, and just fishing right here, one of the things I've noticed, we've caught some hogs, we've caught some medium fish, we've caught some small fish. So you guys have had some good hatches, and it's, right. yeah. you're gonna have some good fishing for a while. Yeah, the uh, TWRA does an absolute great job of managing this lake for the fisheries. Uh, they, they stock a lot of crappie every year on the black nose. In uh, the black crappie, obviously, and the white crappie. We don't catch a lot of white crappie at this end of the lake. They're mostly up in the rivers with shallower water. But um, they make sure, that, I mean, there's a walleye fishery here that's world class. Here People don't even know about it. It's world class walleye fishing. We catch walleyes all year long. We can troll for them in the middle of winter. You can catch them in the spring, catch them in the summer, all different ways. People don't even know there's walleyes in this lake. Obviously, we're known for world record smallmouth. Small yeah. yeah. And, and I think we talked about that this spring when we did the show is anytime you hear Dale Hollow, it's smallmouth, smallmouth. Yeah. And uh, that crappie show we did this spring was pretty darn good, you know. As a matter of fact, Denny, I think that's what credits your success this summer was our, our crappie show. Absolutely. We did. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you. For, uh, people come in and start talking and then I see my business card and they say, Denny Wilbert. Oh, he was on Brush Pile Fishing. <laughs> and, and yeah, Mary says, yeah, he's a movie star. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get your autograph before we leave too. Uh, we'll trade, how's that? <laughs> a lot of this, like this structure here we're fishing right now is homemade plastic. We'll take a piece of PVC pipe, make some circles around it and sink it. Yeah. And it holds them, it gets the moss on it. And then one over there has got a tree, so we kind of rotate them around and and uh, we put plenty of trees in here. Well, you know what, with this deep deep water you have, I'm gonna hook you up when we leave. You ever heard about moss back? Yes, I have. I am going to get you a phone number because those things are huge. And you sink a couple of these in here, you're, it's gonna be lights out, well, guaranteed. I look forward to it. Ooh, there's the thump there. What are your size limits and creel limits down here? Uh, it's 10 inches is the minimum. Okay. And we can keep, keep 15 per person per day. Something I highly recommend to crappie fishermen, if they've got a lake that they like around them and it can get to the, uh, on a regular basis to put the time and the effort into making their crappie hides and putting them out there because you make your own luck there because you go to you eliminate a lot of time when you've got some spots you can go to and you're confident the fish are on them if you put it in the good spots and if a spot's not holding fish you've got a ton of options yep there we go there we go not a big one i don't think but it's a crappie and it'd be a keeper if we's cleaning some about 11 inch fish here good cleaner I've went back to the slim stick. I caught a few on the uh, stump bugs, but slim stick is, is producing today. So right in that brush. And I'm telling you, Denny, when I say in it, I felt the branch, it come off of it and then bam. All I'm doing now, folks, I'm actually, these brush piles are on the bottom or these trees. So I've got a 132nd ounce jig head. It takes forever to get down there in 35 foot of water, but I'm letting it drop all the way down and then I'm just doing a few cranks up, jigging it like that. 
And if I get the hit, of course I try to catch them, but if not, then I'll work it up just a few more cranks, just trying to figure out where they are. And like I say, right now they're not hitting hard. So instead of doing a drop down method, since I'm 35 foot down those trees, we know they're deep. So go ahead and get down there instead of dropping down, work up. This is where this sharpshooter six is nice too, because we're in close now. We're not on the boat where we're you know, making long flips to whatever structure we're fishing working right over top of it. And the sharpshooter is awesome for this. I'm giving it a little bit longer too when I reel up and I'll pop it one or a few times and I'm really letting it set for a long time before I move it again because last couple of fish have come on it's basically sitting still. So they don't want a whole lot and they're not hitting it hard now. The bite has definitely changed from this morning. Man, Danny, it takes forever for this 30 second to drop, but I think if we put something heavier on it'll even make it they more were, finicky. Yeah. This morning they were hitting it on the drop. Yeah, well this morning they they were aggressive. It's funny, sometimes when you fish these trees, they're right on the tree, sometimes they're on the other side of the tree. You know, I've really found that true, like if it's uh, out in the open on a sunny day, and it just, if it's especially in shallow water, the where the shade is by that tree, they could be 10 foot off of it, actually. Let's check in with Russ for the Brush Pile Gear Check. Hey folks, thanks for joining me for today's Brush Pile Gear Check. Use two rods today. I want to talk about this first one here, Sharpshooter 6 by B&M. Of course, it's uh, specifically made for shooting docks, but when we were walking inside of the boathouses today, it was great because we've got a little space. You don't need the long rod for that. As far as the reel, I had a B&M Pro Staff spinning reel on this. Now, on, normally on my dock shooting rods, I've got four pound slime line, but today I knew we were going to be hitting trees, so I switched it out to a six pound, just a little bit heavier in case we uh, got into those trees. As far as the jig head, went with a 132nd ounce. We wanted something that was going to fall real small since we ended up, you know, getting our tree or our fish in these trees. Now, Use the slim stick mostly today. I tried the brush gliders. I couldn't get them to hit on that because the fish got pretty finicky on us. Caught a few on the stump bug, but by far most of the fish came on the slim stick. Couldn't put a color pattern together either. We caught them on about every color. You'd catch one or two and then it would just stop. So no real color pattern today. You just had to keep switching. One of the keys too was tipping those jigs with the crappie magnet slab bites. Uh, it seemed to make all the difference in the world. And again, match that up with one of Slim Sticks, that was the ticket for getting these fish inside the boathouses. Hope you enjoyed that. That's today's Brush Pile Gear Check. Well, folks, today's show brings me to a really good point. You hear fishermen talk about it, especially tournament anglers. Um, but we're, we're gonna talk a little bit about versatility. So we had, in our mind, we had a game plan what we were gonna do today. And as you can see, it's nothing like we talked about in the opening. Um, and that's why when you go fishing, especially if you've got, you know, a day to go fish or two days to go fish, you might plan on getting the fish one way, but it may not work out that way. So always have a backup plan. Take all the baits you need, take everything that you, you can do in different techniques, because just like today, um, we were bent on, on getting that deep water show. That wind picked up, we couldn't do anything. But we've got one day to tape this show. You may only have one day to fish. So make sure you're versatile, have a backup plan, and try different techniques if you need to be. And uh, today, it's made the difference between not being able to fish, let alone catch any, but actually catching some pretty nice fish in here. Well, Denny, we caught some nice fish today. It was absolutely nothing like we had planned on doing. Fishing never is, is it? No, it wasn't you today, can only hope, sure. yeah. You know, it was supposed to get a little bit warmer today. It actually got colder as the day went on. The winds, like I say, we, we couldn't fish it. It was just too rough out there. Um, but one of the benefits, you know, we're talking about Dale Hollow Marina. That's one of the benefits if you stay here, you can come in here and still catch some nice fish. Yep, there's a backup plan. If it goes bad on the lake, we've always got them stacked in here pretty good. I'll tell you what, we still caught some nice fish today. Uh, like I say, as long as I'm catching crappie on my birthday, working like a dog, I'm good with it. Um, Denny, if someone wanted to still get down here and do a winter trip here, 
Uh, are you open all winter, and will these fish hit in the docks all winter? Yes, believe it or not, they hit better as it gets colder. We're open, we've got uh, accommodation for fishermen with our houseboats and our floating cabins in um, some hotels we keep open in the wintertime. We can accommodate them, and uh, if it's not biting on the lake, we're more than welcome to come in here, sit in here, and get a little chair and coffee coffee, and sit there and get you a bucket full of crappie and bluegill and red ear and everything else hides under here in the wintertime. All right, there you have it, folks. Denny, I've had a ball today. Thank you. Folks, get down here, get you some bonehead tackle because that you've seen, they will absolutely crush them. We did in the spring and here today. So it's, it's been fun. Again, folks, not what we expected, but a great time right here on Dale Hollow. Hope you enjoyed it and you stay tuned because we'll be back next week with Brush Pile Fishing. I was fishing here a couple of days ago. This frog walked, flopped up behind me. And I looked down and said, if you'll pick me up and kiss me, I'll turn into a beautiful princess and give you your every wildest wish and dream. I reached down, picked it up, stuck it in my pocket. It wiggled around for a few minutes and I pulled it back out and it said, didn't you hear what I said? I said, yeah, but I've been married to my beautiful wife for 40 years and at my age, I'm just happy to have a talking frog. <laughs> <laughs>